Good day to all of you homies and homettes. Today we're going to be going over the Fury alternate advancement tree and AA setup for different circumstances. Primarily we're going to focus on a raid aspect with some heal capabilities, some healing and utility capabilities as a main priority of focus. So what we're going to start with is we're going to start with the Druid, the Druid page. Okay, We're absolutely going to want to take Herophant's Wisdom because it gives us three different abilities to choose from, gives us some personal mitigation for physical damage, and, you know, four primary stats. At this stage in the game, cap being about 1040, we're pretty much always over the cap. So the, the wisdom primary stats, not super useful, but the real reason we want this is it's going to give us these abilities that give us extra crit chance, extra heal percent, extra damage. So priority one, absolutely want to take this because you get three buffs that you can choose from to put one on at a time, which is either three and a half free crit chance, I believe 2% healing increase, and a damage proc based on auto attacks. So, after that, since we're going to be focused on a raid-focused build, we're going to want AE blockers. Now, our AE blockers is going to be down the agility tree, because we're going to end with tortoise shell which is a 30 second duration buff. It's recast with the reuse currently is about a minute and a half to two minutes is your is your standard time for the spell reuse. It's going to increase the hit point regen of your group by 50%, which is huge. It's gonna increase the combat health regen of your group by 62, not bad. Uh, it's gonna give you a 100% chance to block all AEs that are coming to you and your group. This is absolutely critical when you're in those raid strategy fights where there's aoe's that are going to one shot your mages one shot your groups fear your group etc whatever it is that you would be hit by with an aoe this will prevent it as long as you don't have aggro on the mob and you shouldn't chances are your tank will have aggro that being said this is a super useful ability almost every druid will spec for it in any kind of raid setting there are some situations where you don't need this so some won't run it but primarily you're going to want to spec for this. So we're going to use the majority of our points on the Druid tree for this. We're going to take 10 in the Mez just because I like having the extra chance for the resistibility. You know, it helps the mob not resist you as much. Doesn't really affect epic stuff, but it's super nice when you are dealing with heroic groups. So I like to take that. The charm we don't ever use, so we're going to put two points in that because we have to put a total of 22 in this point tree just to access the turtle shell. We definitely want to have the 10 points in wild regeneration because it reduces the amount of time it takes for our next dot heal to come off, our hot heal, which is our heal over time. So essentially that's going to reduce this time down. Instead of every two seconds, it brings it down to about a minute or to a second and a half and brings the duration of the spell down. So it, all in all, will help you get more heals off over time faster, which helps for multiple mobs and quicker recoveries. Once we get that 10 to 10 here, Again, we got the 10 in Calm for the chance for the resistibility increase. Makes it 24% harder. Super cool for heroic content. Super cool for soloing and doing quests if that's your thing. Even works in some raid content when they have heroic mobs in the fight. Charm's not that useful. You can use it if you want it. It's your choice. Definitely have 10 in Wild Regen. Then we're going to pick up Tortoise, Tortoise Shell. Now, as far as this tree goes for raid, there's a bunch of different options that you can go down. You can go down the DPS tree, which would be your strength to give you a little bit more haste, a little bit more DPS. When I do this build, what I tend to do is I tend to go 10 in the first one, give me some extra damage to maximize the haste buff. I go 10 in the DPS tree just to give me some extra damage on my weapon auto attacks. And I tend to go two on this just because you're not really focused on a proc heal like this. It can be useful, but typically when we're healing, we plan our heals. We heal when we need to. We don't tend to chance our group heals based on a percent proc. You know, percent procs are nice to help with the with the variables, but we really don't want to plan for just healing on this, which is why I don't take that. I take the extra damage, the extra haste. That'll unlock an extra ability, which is super, super nice, super good ability to do a lot of damage very quickly. Uh, it works very well with your Fey Fire procs, super quick cast, decent recast. It's up quite often. So if this is the option you're wanting to go for, we'll go over a DPS build later. I'll show you how I do that one. The second or the third line in the middle here for the stamina line, super good to have Serene Symbol. Just make sure that when you're looking at it, you make sure you put enough points in this to get you to the current content. I believe it's six. 
So 70 puts me at three. So it's four. Four puts me at 77. Every mob for EOF, you shouldn't have to worry about being past 75 for this X pack. If you do, you'll just have to go to five. Super simple. What that does is that dispels buffs on the mob. Also drains 2% of his power. Super useful. I like to use it for PvP fights, for especially versus healers. But it's really good at stripping buffs off. You know, if you're dueling or fighting like that, really good at heroic content mobs. So, but not not a super big prio. Serene's knowledge, again, not super worried about it because being immune to stuns is nice. Being able to be not interrupted is nice. But again, it, you're focused on a random percent chance. You can't really control that. It's nice when it happens, but you can't really plan for it. And then having your final buff down here as Serene Symbols with a 5-minute recast before reuse for 30 seconds of buff. I just don't find that to be useful outside of a PvP setting. It's not really make or break, live or die. If that's what you're really looking for, then... Oops, I didn't mean to use it. But if that's what you're looking for, you can always just use Freedoms of Mind. They basically make you immune to stifles and stuns for 10 seconds. It's 20 seconds shorter. Uh, recast is also longer, but it's easier than having to waste 22 points just to get that. Or I should say 12 other points, because we are going to take this right here, which is Serene Focus. It's going to give us more crit chance, which is huge in my opinion. It helps overall with your healing. It helps overall with your spell damage. So I, I am a huge fan of crit chance. Until we can get to 100 crit chance here, we absolutely want to take this. Crit chance is a huge multiplier for the TLEs here on Varsoon. So... That's why we spec into that. As far as this tree goes, that's about what I do on here for now. We'll come back to this later. You really want to make sure you have enough points for your Fury Advancement tree. So we'll cover a couple more on this page afterwards. Would love to get some points in the disruption ordination kind of line so we don't get interrupted as much. Or if we tend to move a little bit, it doesn't cancel our spell cast. The extra percent damage to spells is nice. Love having all these abilities for extra damage. So I tend to take one in them. But we're going to move over to the Fury Tree now. Fury Tree, your first four options are going to be mitigation increase to your group uh, intelligence, or sorry, not intelligence, a wisdom and agility reduction on your debuff, a dot reduction and dot reduction on both your two dot spells, two of which are super useful in my opinion. Uh, one of your biggest spells is actually Death Swarm, so I would love to take that five in that. But if you're going to focus on survivability first, you want to make sure you kind of keep it in this order just in case you're not max A. As you can see, I'm only 84 right now. i still got about 16 more to go. So we're going to focus on utility, survivability, and heals for now. Then we'll start working in damage once we get that baseline laid. So we're going to put in the mitigation increase for your armor of nature here, which is your spell. Again, we talked a little bit about this in the basic video, but this is a little bit more in-depth on the AA tree and why we're going to get into what we're doing. So they increase the mitigation on the group. It basically increases the total mitigation for your physical damage, which means your AOE cleaves, your slashing, your Cheldrak stomps, your, you know, any kind of physical damage that you would be taking. This, gr this group buff will help your mages in cloth armor survive a little bit by adding a little bit more protection to them with those mitigation increases. So I like to add that in as a baseline survivability. You don't have to do anything. It's free. It adds to everybody in the group. You don't have to cast anything. It's an auto buff that you keep on at all times. So that's why we start with those five in the first tree. Then we're going to move on to the second tree. You have a Peerless Predator, which is basically this. It's a super nice buff for you. It's a good self buff, but the problem is when you start doing this, it doesn't do much for you or for your group really per se. It's really just for you. It's going to increase your movement speed, which is nice to get to somebody that may have got ported and you need to go res them or to help go get somebody that got left behind during a during a transition of a fight. Kind of nice. The, the safe fall reduction, not really a big deal. We don't really focus too much on that nowadays with all the jumping mobs and that kind of stuff, the leaping mounts and the fey falls and so on. So you're not so far so much worried about that safe fall reduction, but the, the in combat movement speed can be useful. I don't see it useful enough to go ahead and spec five points into. If you're going for a buff for your group, uh, a nice one to have and one that we'll probably end up doing on the second run is going to be the Forest Spirit. Basically, at the end of it, I believe, let's see, I think it's going to be 30% again. So we'll see a 30% increase if we were to take all five all the way on this intelligent buff for your group. Also adds wisdom to you, which can increase your overall damage. But again, it's not 
going to add to your wisdom as you can read here. It says intelligence only, so you're really only applying that 30% to the intelligence, which is going to typically be three mages in your group. If you're a Fury, you're going to have your enchanter, you're going to have a sorcerer, you're going to have a summoner. Those are pretty much what you're going to have in your group. So between those three, you'll increase their intelligence by 30%. Again, remember, it's super easy to hit cap, so not a huge focus right now. So we're going to leave that off unless we see it later where there's a couple people that maybe don't have as much gear and they need a little bit of a stat increase. If the potions aren't doing it for them or self buffs, maybe we'll spec into that 30% increase. So instead, what we're gonna do for this, we'll get to the other two here in a second, but we really wanna focus on emergency healing. Basically what this does, this is a passive spell, you don't have to do anything, and it increases your overall healing by 50%. So you upgrade this to your five points, you get 50% more healing for your emergencies, your procs like this, and so forth. Not 100% certain right now if it affects all your heals from the testing that I've done. It does appear to apply to all of my healing. I think that the enhanced emergency healing may be a slight word wrong where it's kind of, it, it could be focused on your emergency classified heals. It could not. As you can tell, these are classified as your emergency heals. They're your emergency heals because they are instant cast. They have long recast. And they're basically a spell that you can use as a quick target. So say I have more members in my group. Oop, what am I doing? No. So basically I have more members in my group. Somebody just got hit or just pulled aggro from the tank. I need to save them. I tab target to them, hit my emergency. It adds 50% healing to that. Again, with the testing that I've done, I've seen that 50% added to my other heals. So I'm not super worried about... Even, even if it was only for your emergencies, I'm not super worried about wasting it because I use my emergencies all the time. They're super useful. You don't always need them up. There's a lot of fights that you don't need them up. And if you do, by the time you need them in the fight, they usually come back. They're, they're usually about a five to seven minute fight that you end up needing them on. So they're super easy, super, use, super useful, super versatile. So I like to take the five points in that. Next up is going to be your D-Hate in this line. We'll get to that as well. Then you're going to have your Snares. We'll get to that when we do the second pass through. We're going to move on to our third line and our 15-point marker. So if you're buffing specific people, Primal Fury is a good one to update or upgrade because it increases the overall percent proc for your Primal Fury, which is super nice because it just allows more. You always get the static, but it really allows for that casting speed increase and the haste speed increase to proc more on your sorcerer or your summoner or whoever you have this buff on so i mean it's super useful i take it on the second run if i do never really on the first because again your your job as a fury is utility and survivability obviously you're going to be doing uber deeps that's why we love playing fury but right now we're focused on a raid set build so we're going to go over all the utility stuff in our first pass and then we're going to start picking up damage so for our first pass we're going to focus on the fey fire trigger fey fire trigger over the death prevent trigger in my opinion because you will be hitting fey fire a lot more than you will be hitting your death prevents i know i'm saying we're focused on a raid build and a utility build but as far as utility goes there's no better utility spell for a fury than fey fire it adds raid wide dps by increasing your group triggers when you get to the final rank by two so you have all six members of your group with six triggers transferring to 30 procs of about 2k damage so if we go here we look at fey fire my fey fire procs at 2177 right now that means we have 2177 damage times 30 which turns out to 65,310 damage extra for me to take those five points into fey fire for the entire group basically as a spike damage within a five second time frame window because most people's spells and combat arts are about a second long so if we wanted to extend that we can say a 10 second window within a 10 second window we do 65,000 dps which is 650 dps for the group increase for that for those 20 seconds or for those 10 seconds so we're going to take the five points in fey fire get us those two extra procs for the group that's going to be huge don't, don't underestimate that spell. It's one of your best utility spells. Moving on to the next line for the next five points to total us up for 20 to get down to our bottom four skills. Personally, I like to go with the Porcupine. Adding the Regenerative Heal to Porcupine is going to basically increase your Porcupine to a raid-wide heal. 
So for example, mine, because I spec into a lot of max HP gear for this reason, because it adds based on your max, or it heals based on your max health, as you can see, heals raid members and group members for 1.7 to 2.1 of the caster's max health. So when I'm fully buffed in raid, I'm sitting at close to 20k health. I think last night I procked at about 18k. So you're looking at a good almost 500 heal every tick going across the raid. And a static heal initial cast on a big AoE to prevent mitigation, you know, when you're doing your mitigation increases. So Porcupine, super huge, su super huge spell, super useful, very versatile. Again, every raid, sometimes raids run three Furies, four Furies to keep Porcupine up all the time. I find Porcupine to be the most useful utility spell as far as defensive strategies from a Fury. So I'm absolutely going to take my five points in Porcupine. That's just me. The best, second best option, in my opinion, or the next best option for a lot of you guys out there is going to be the hibernation. If you like using hibernation and you want it to trigger on the 15%, then all you do is spec into that. I believe it takes one point, and boom, five points are spent. Now your hibernation, instead of going off when the duration ends at 10 seconds, it will proc when your group members drop below 15%. I'm not a huge fan of running this if I don't need to. Because, again, it's one point. You get one. All it does is add a 15% trigger to a spell that you can try and get proper planning on to go off. And you get to take those five points and move them elsewhere. A lot of people like it. I'm a huge fan of it. I do like hibernation when it's needed, when you get the 15% health trigger. I love it. It's a great spell. But for me personally, I'd rather put my five points on one of these other lines if I can time hibernation correctly. If a lot of you guys are struggling with getting your hibernation to proc when you want it to based on that 10 second lead time, then I would absolutely spec for this. It'll keep your group alive in a pinch and, and you'll never look back. It's a good it's a good spell. So but my, my personal opinion, I'd rather go porcupine for the first run through. Casting skill ooh, sorry, casting skill reductions are huge. Getting another eight times five, what, forty? So getting another forty percent increase on your casting skill reductions is good always good utility to have debuffs there are going to be other debuffs on the mob that take more of a priority than that so i would skip it for this run more damage is always fun we're not focused on that right now more damage for the call of the storms we're not focused on that and the reuse on your ring of fire is always nice again not super focused on that so now we've got our 20 points in the tree, which opens up the bottom line. So our four choices to choose from from the bottom line are going to be Pact of Nature, Animal Form, Kudza, and Energy Vortex. Out of this list, my personal favorite for the first run through is going to have to be either Animal Form or Energy Vortex. And I'll explain why in a second. As far as the four here goes, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of Kudzu. It's no reason. There's no reason for you to really spec for that, for this expansion for PVE type stuff. All it does is add a root to the target that can be dispelled when damage is taken, and then it slows the target. This isn't really gonna affect any kind of raid mob, you know, for per se. It's it's gonna help a little bit with the immunities they're gonna gain and all that. It's just it's just not worth specking 20 points into to grab that. In my opinion, there's three other really good options. If you want to go with super utility, then go with Pact of Nature. If you have a good a good Corsurer or a good Illusionist, some kind of Chanter in your group that you can trust, or a support as a Dirge or a Troop, typically you'll have a Troop. If you have one of them, another support class that'll help you out and you want to give out another group heal to your group that has a group cure component, then absolutely take Pact of Nature. It's going to allow them to basically have an abolishment of their own, which is your group cure. So allowing uh, with one healer in the group, allowing for another class member or another group member to have a group cure to help you out in those pinch, super huge. If you get to fights where you can't keep up with the cures that are cure to win fails, you know, such as Sheldrak with the disease spell that if it triggers again would wipe the raid. Same thing with Kurur back in DT. If you didn't cure it fast enough, then you would die. It really helps give you a little bit more of a buffer if you miss your abolishment cast for your group cure, always better to kind of cast it a little bit later than to try to pre-cure too early to kind of prevent that missing it 
you usually have enough time window to do it. Some fights you don't, so it's nice to have a buffer between you and another group member. So feel free to pick Pact of Nature if you want somebody to help you out with group cures. The group heals, not the end-all, be-all. It helps in a pinch again, but the big, fo- the big focus here or function here is going to be that group cure that they get. My personal favorites, Animal Form and Energy Vortex. My favorite thing to do with this is to create a macro and then target whoever I want this to go to, whether it's my summoner, typically it's going to be my summoner or my sorcerer. It adds all of these stats. I really love giving it to a a necro that's about to life burn because it increases their max health by 21.2%. So it adds another tier level of percent health for the necro's life burn to pull from. Super amazing spell to have macro to your necros in raid for this expansion to really boost that life burn. Love this spell. Love getting it set up for a prep before a life burn call. So it's why I would personally take this one because it adds a little bit more value than increasing just a group chance or basically just adding 10% crit bonus to the group. Definitely a good option. Love this one too. If you want to focus more on individual achievements and boosting up to help your rate as a whole, you want to take animal form. If you want to focus more on your personal group and your group's achievements, then you want to take energy vortex. Both super selfless spells. You can use them on yourself, but you got to be careful when you use animal form on yourself because, again, if you are a priest, then what happens is you cannot cast any beneficial spells. So if you'll look, I'll go ahead and cast it on myself now. You'll watch all of my beneficial spells go away. That does not just include my heals, by the way. So as well as my summon spell pet for the Ring of Fire, it doesn't allow me to cast Fey Fire which is a group buff because it's technically classified as a beneficial spell. It does not allow me to cast Energy Vortex or Tortoise Shell. So be extremely careful if you use Animal Pact on yourself. Typically, you want to save this for your Necros, your Sorcerers, your Summoners. That's going to be your best bet for it. Your other second best bet, or your other second best best, oh my jeez, your other second best bet is going to be the Energy Vortex spell, which again, Love this spell. It is super versatile, super useful. Adding that 10% crit bonus. Crit bonus isn't in the game right now as a stat. So you being able to add that 10% crit bonus to your group is huge, especially when you got the sorcerers in your group, especially the wizards who usually spec for the catalyst for the guaranteed crit on either fusion, ice comet. It's super, super nice to have. I, I really appreciate timing this up and lining it up with ability. That's That gets into a whole nother level. But those are your best pets. I think mine's going to be animal form for the first run through. So we got 21 points. That leaves us with, what, 21 points spent and 35. So 56 points spent. We got 44 more to go. 44 more is going to allow us to get another two lines in this. I find some value in here, but again, we'll come back to this in a second. We're going to go ahead and run through that second line because I want to at least get Energy Vortex or Pact of Nature on this next run. This is when you can really focus in on your how you want to play play style. This is when you can focus on increasing your debuffs. This debuff's nice to put on, but it doesn't. there's not a lot of mobs in the game that have agility or wisdom that need to be debuffed. So I tend to skip this one. I will spec into it for specific fights, but it's really going to be on a fight-to-fight basis. I don't tend to just leave my points in it. Again, your next biggest spell is going to be the Death Swarm. I love Death Swarm. It's a very useful spell. It's also a debuff, so I'm going to prioritize this over Tempest, even though Tempest can do more damage. I want to focus on the increase in that debuff or maintaining that debuff across the board with the extra damage procs. So we're going to go with the Death Swarm. That's going to reduce that timer on to the Death Swarm. It's going to drop the recast. Maybe not the recast, sorry. It's going to drop the trigger trigger procs on it, which allows more damage to proc off, which lets you get the full duration of that spell's damage in a shorter time, boosting your raid's DPS, helping your raid as a whole. Next line we're going to move down to, I'm going to go ahead and pick up the Brambles. This is a personal choice. You can always go with the Intelligence choice, but remember, your mages are always or usually always going to be more than the cap for their Intelligence, so I'm not super focused on that. What I am focused on is getting my reuse up for my D-Hate, because as a healer, especially when, when crap hits the fan, you usually want to be able to D-Hate all the mobs off you to keep you up so that you can keep people alive. So I like to focus on putting my points into this. What it does is it reduces the overall timer 
of your spells recast. So 150 seconds is two and a half minutes. So I get two and a half minutes off a five minute base, which puts it at two and a half. Then it increases, or sorry, it increases the reuse by 150 and then it decreases the base down to two minutes. So every two minutes, minute and a half or so, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not specced into it right now, but basically it allows you to use that AOE D hate more often, which allows you to drop the aggro if a tank dies, drop aggro if a tank's pulling a lot of mobs. Super useful spell. I use this spell all the time. Absolutely love it. Love having the points in the spell. Gonna go again. We're gonna read over it real quick. What it does is it slows the targets in the area of effect. What I love to do with this is I usually cast this as my D hate, and while they're all running away, I'll hit higher fanix gif if I'm specced into it, which tends to root all the mobs in the area, which allows the group a little bit more time to recover. Doesn't work as much in raids. You're really focused on the D hate in raids, but in group content, super useful. We're gonna go to the third line now. Third line again, we can go with the porcupine, or not the porcupine, sorry, the primal fury triggers. We talked about that already. I'm a huge fan of getting debuffs out. I talked a little bit about this debuff in the base video. I don't focus so much on the on the heal. I basically ignore the fact that it has a heal and I just take that as a bonus. What I'm interested in is the stat increase, the stamina increase for the group for survivability, and the mitigation increase with the power reduction. Since everybody's usually at cap, this kind of goes out the window as well in raids, so your top two options here aren't super important. The really, really the three and four you want to focus on is going to be the stamina increase, which allows your group to have more health in return, keeps you alive during those AOEs instead of getting one shot, adds base avoidance of about a percent to everybody, increases overall mitigation to everybody, and reduces the power cost. The big kicker is going to be reducing the power cost. So I want to maintain this up on as many miles as possible, but I don't want it to interrupt my rotation. I don't want it to take me 10 years to put it on a mob. I want to split it across all the mobs. If we have three or four, I want to have it on three or four mobs. So I'm going to go ahead and use it so that the reuse is up. It's up faster once I use it, and it takes one second less to cast. I believe it is a, I believe it is a one and a half second cast or a two second cast. Not gonna lie to you guys, casting yeah about one and a half seconds. So two seconds base probably with my casting speed. It's down to a minute and a half, or not a minute and a half. It's down to a second and a half. So then we'll take off that extra second. Then it takes half a second to cast. That reuse will probably drop down to about five seconds. Let's see, five seconds down. So it'll drop to three seconds, which means I can just put it across all four in about a 10 to 15 second time frame. Then I never have to worry about casting it again because most fights don't last three minutes where you have to spread it across four different mobs. Once that's the case, you can usually reapply Feast to the, to the main name who's typically the only one standing. So I'm going to take that on my second run for this one because, again, we're looking to go for three runs. My third run is going to be going probably for this death prevent. I also don't hate the damage idea for those of you that like to play like me, but if you're, this is what we're focused on here is a more utility-based build. So for, this third, for the fourth line, sorry, excuse me, for the fourth line, you can go for that hibernation proc or you can go for the skill reduction. I think I'm going to go for... For the skill reduction, I might go for the skill reduction for a utility base. The duration is only 36 seconds. It's, it's a good, nice to have an interrupt. Throwing in interrupts on fights are super useful. So it's not the end all be all. So we'll go ahead and take the five in this. We'll take the five in this just to give us the extra casting skill reduction. Throw it in. Why not? Right. Next thing we're going to do for utility is we'll take Pact of Nature. That'll give that group heal we talked about earlier. So that's it for the next tier. We got 23 points left. We're debating on if we want to put it on here or if we want to run back through here one more time. If we run back through here one more time, you're going to get a little bit more utility out of it, but you're also going to be able to spec for more damage. So I think, I think we have enough utility for now. If you really want to go crazy with it, you can kind of mix and match on here, but a lot of this is self served buffs so i would say as a whole you'll benefit the rate more by running through these so let's go ahead and do let's go ahead and do the increase or the reduced duration for the tempest just to give us a little bit more damage we're going to skip this line we're not going to get too much more out of this line there's not really going to be much left in here if you want to again you can put five into this for the intelligence boost but i just don't think you're going to need it what I would rather see is 
going and skipping and going to this third line and putting 10 points here and saving your five from this and moving it to the third line. If you really struggle with keeping tanks up or you want an extra or you want an extra death prevent during a fight, you can reduce the reuse by going with Feral Tenacity. Five points in it, takes the base down all the way to 90, and then reuse kicks off about 300 seconds, so you're really kind of cutting it in half and then some, more of a more of a three quarter or ooh, quarter, more of a three quarter kind of reduction on it. So you got a quarter time left. So super useful, but it really depends on how much you raid force or how much you guys use death prevents. I'd probably focus more on the trigger percent for Primal Fury. Go ahead and put that up to five percent, and then oop, fire call. Sorry, please excuse that. I'll have to check that in a second. May have to put the video on pause. We'll do five percent increase for the Primal Fury. We'll do casting speed and reuse on the Thunderbolt because that takes a long time to cast. It really sucks when you're casting it and then you got to sit cancel to cast a heal because it took just a little bit too long to cast that. So we're going to go ahead and take that. That's going to add more utility in my in my point of view. Again, your chance to take Hibernation is here. You can take Hibernation if you want to focus on more utility. That's going to open up your last line. Then I'd take Energy Vortex. Another route to go because I'm not a I'm not one to run this right now because I don't need to. I, I tend to just kind of time it. And if I'm off timing, then I just cast an extra heal. It's no big deal. I'd probably go ahead and take the extra cast time for Call of Storms. Super high uh, damaging single target fight as well. Don't be afraid to use your AoEs on single target. Super high damaging. I want to get it off faster so that I can get more heals out. Then I'm going to take that buff for Energy Vortex. What I'll do after that is these last two points we'll go ahead and we'll put into... This, just to give us a little bit more DPS, add a little bit of haste. That base 22 haste is, is pretty solid return, so I like to take that. Your next choice is going to be if you want an extra AoE, you can take Hierophanic. If you want extra single target damage, you can take Thunder Spike. I love specking for AoE damage. If you're only going to put one point in, it's only about a 500 difference. Yeah, you're only looking at about a 500 difference from the top line. You can add the extra, so you're looking at about a thousand difference, but the main thing to look at here is do you want an extra thousand single target damage or do you want an extra thousand damage to all the aoe encounters i'm a huge fan of the aoe encounters we're not focused so much on the dispel that increases every time you level it up as you can tell it increases the dispel so you can dispel roots on your group by doing that much like you can with pact of the cheetah you'd have to increase the rank for for this a little bit more to do that we just don't have the points in my opinion so i'll just take the one point in it give me an extra Give me an extra AOE. So if there's two mobs, I'm hitting for the same same as Thunder Spike, and every mob after two is just another thousand increase for hitting it. The, ca the casting speed is about the same. It's not much of a difference. It's it's you know half. It's half the casting speed, but it's still both less than one second. So not too worried about it. But that's kind of what I, my my solo raid or my single group raid setup would look like. I'd focus on that T-Shell right there. Definitely want to have that T-Shell. I'd get two extra combat abilities. 10% crit chance is a must on the Druid tree. This is kind of how I would spec for that. And then this tree. Absolutely want all three of these. You want to get rid of the fourth one. Fourth one's no good. We kind of lucked out on that. So we can just about take everything in the tree that we need. You can delete the Wisdom and Agility Reduction. Again, fight to fight bases. Not many mobs have Agility or Wisdom that need to be reduced. So not a super huge ask to not put five points into that. Intelligence, again, most people have max cap for their intelligence modification now, so you don't really need that 6% boost. You don't need the safe fall reduction of the in-combat movement speed right now, so that's an easy delete. Don't need anything with snares right now, so easy delete. Your only toss-up here is kind of reducing these. You know, you get to... The only benefit to Pack to the Cheetah is it increases movement speed and the duration, which is not a huge deal, so we can delete that. But if you wanted it for heroic content, take it. The only ask toss up here is kind of your death prevent. If you want to take off your DPS, go more death preventy. Take off your proc chance, go more death preventy. Six one half of another. The fourth line super interesting. Again, you can always take hibernation if you feel that you want that extra trigger for the fifteen percent. I like trying to time mine. It gives me makes me feel good when I hit it. Makes me feel okay when I don't. I just cast extra heals, but it's also a super useful spell. Do not lock it. Do not. Do not avoid it. Do not think that it's not a good spell because I didn't take it. It is an extremely useful and good spell in a pinch. Most of the time you get caught DPSing, but you have hibernation up. Your group hits 15%. They save you 
from a critical mistake, super useful, super, super useful. So that pretty much does it for the Fury AAs for the raid spec setup for the heals. If we wanted to go more of a DPS build, I'll show you what that looks like too. We'll go ahead and reset this. Yeah, we'll go ahead and reset this all the way back to the beginning. Now we're going to go and get into our DPS spec build. As far as DPS goes, we really want to focus on damage over everything. I tend to use this more solo concept. What I'm going to build here for you guys is, is going to be more of a solo or a heroic content where you're not looking for T-Shell. You can combine this one and the first one and kind of mix and match and plug and play with the points that I show you to build more of a hybrid one if you would like. Okay, good. So it's not anything. It was just a general alert. So I don't, just so you guys don't think I'm avoiding a fire, it was a general alert. Not too, not too worried about a general alert. They just send out a page with some info for us to call later. So, no big deal. But basically, you're gonna take the one I'm about to build, take the first one, put them together, plug and play, and you can build a hybrid build. You can pick and choose what utility options you like from option one, what DPS options you like from option two. Make it make make it match your play style and kind of build a hybrid build. That's kind of why I'm only going to do two here because your play style is going to be different than mine. First things first on the Druid Treat again, we want to take that for the extra crit chance buff primarily. So you want to make sure you get your stances. My favorite option in here used to be Infusion. I haven't tested to see if it's still the same or not because they patched it where it only affects you when you heal and 500 damage per heal. It's not nothing, but it's not what I'm looking for when I'm specking for DPS. So first thing I want with DPS is to increase my crit chance as high as possible. We're going to take the 16% Serene Focus. First things foremost, that's it. I don't care about anything else on this tree. Now we have that. I'll come back to the first tree again. What I really want to focus on is reducing my tick duration for these dots so that I increase my overall damage. So I know I'm going to want to take these two. Second line has absolutely nothing to do with DPS right now. So I'm going to skip this line for now. Again, we're focused on pure DPS right now. So we're going to go one, two, Fey Fire for the triggers. It's the highest DPS increase you're going to get. Super u super utility, whole works, the whole nine. So we want that. And then we're going to come here, love AOE damage. Animal, we'll, actually, we'll go energy vortex first. We're focused on that crit bonus for the extra damage. First line done. Super simple. Bam, bam. Skip the second line. It's all utility. This line's got Fey Fire and it's got Thunderbolt. You can kind of take your pick. First line, you should go Fey Fire every time. Fey Fire with two extra triggers. Super important. You'll hear me say it a lot. Super important. Now, we're going to run through second time because we want Animal Pack. Again, we're going to skip this first one for now. We're going to go to this th the third one. We're going to increase our Thunderbolt. I love standing next to the mob and meleeing. As you can tell, I don't have a ranged weapon. I have a, a melee weapon. So I want to be in close personal with the mob. want to be poking them in the butt. So we're going to take that one. We're going to take this one because we'll drop the pet at his feet. And then we're going to take Star Nova. Now, we should only need five more points to get to that animal pack for this line. If you want, if you're self buffing yourself, then I probably would take the trigger proc for the Primal Fury. That would give you the most bang for your buck. Boom, two lines done. Super DPS setup. We can take the extra points now and we can move over to this tree for more DPS if we want. So the option I would do, if you're not going to take any more on here, if you're not going to try and get any utility and you're going strictly DPS, then this is about all you would need to spend in here to achieve that. Then you come back to the Druid point. We got, what, 42 in here, and we got 11 in here. So what's that, 53? So we got 53 points, which leaves us 47 more to play with. So what we're going to do in here is we're going to take the DPS line for sure because we want those auto attacks and those ranged autos from our crossbows hitting as hard as possible we're going to max that maybe we'll take this here in a second we're going to see well actually we'll just go ahead and take this because the extra damage for three points isn't 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 too big or i should say for four points so there's four points we'll take that for the extra damage we'll throw that in here on our rotation list it'll give us a nice little 2k hit every 10 seconds or less than 10 seconds so i do like that we'll take that Next on it is we're going to want to go ahead and increase the base damage of our spells. Obviously, increase the base damage of our spells. We do 7% more damage. Roughly, if you cap it at 10%, just for easy math, we'll say 10% of a $10,000 D or $10,000. 10 percent of a 10,000 DPS fight, you're doing an extra thousand, so it puts you at 11k. 
you kind of get the math. Super simple, super easy. I was talking with a couple of people and they were telling me that the biggest increase when you get here is from six, seven, and eight. So seven and eight are your biggest jumps here. So at seven, we're at 1784. At eight, we're at, there it is, 1787. So we're not going to worry about the eighth one. We're going to go ahead and roll that one back. So seven puts us at 1784. If we drop that one more, yeah, so we get about 100 increase on that one. So we'll go to seven here. We'll get the rest of the percent increases here. So we'll go to that 10% there. That looks good for pure DPS. Then you want to take your AOEs. So I want the AOE. There's a hundred increase on that. There's a 50 increase on that. That also dispels roots. That's an 80 increase on that. So we'll take that. Now we're at the 77 levels of dispel. So it'll dispel any root effect on you from any mob in the EOF expansion. If you want to keep putting points into it, feel free to put points into it for some extra damage. You could be better off putting more points into this. I think having that with the 77 dispel level super useful allows you to cleanse that root allows you to root other mobs I'll show you how to do it here in a second I'll actually save this one and put it in action here in a second for you to be able to see what it looks like for the last two points you can go with the disruption and ordination I actually really like that because you don't want to be interrupted when you're casting that being said I also enjoy having a little bit of utility so I like having a mez. So I'm going to go ahead and take one point in the mez. Yeah, I'm going to take one point in the mez. And then I like moving a lot and, and kiting when I'm fighting. So I'm, And again, this is a solo build, powerhouse build. I like to move a lot even in raid when I'm moving and transitioning from mob areas and jousting out. So I'm going to go one in the mez for utility, one in the, one in the combat speed. That's pretty much going to do it for your DPS. If you stick around, I'll show you what it looks like. I'm about to go ahead and start doing a catechism. And you got some items in here that I got to get. So I'm going to start clearing some names. But as far as your DPS spec, again, this is what it looks like. Feel free to take a picture, screenshot it. This is 100% pure DPS, not worried about anything else. Take it as you see it. Mix and match this and the original one I just showed you prior for your heal spec. Take what you like from those two options. Mix and match. Create your own hybrid build. Put it into practice see what happens we're going to call this deeps super uber now we're going to go ahead and commit to it and i'll put it in action you guys can kind of see how the dps spec looks how it works if you want to stick around and watch feel free if not hopefully the information that has been provided to you all was useful hopefully you were able to gain something from it we can try and go a little bit more in depth or in detail if you still need to if you want feel free to reach out to me i have no problem answering questions again comment i'll try to answer them in the comments hopefully we'll have more guides coming through pretty soon i'll do probably a run through of the different spells and what they do what they mean the wording on them there's a lot that kind of goes into playing this game it's been a long around for a long time a lot of it stays the same but a lot of it changes so once again my name's studies stopa or an in game most people call me thick it's been a blast as always like subscribe do the thing if you want to. doesn't matter. Join the homie army. This is just a reference point for people to see information, good quality information, and somewhere for you to stop. Not a one-stop shop. I don't have all the classes. Maybe we will. Who knows? We'll see what happens. If we get big enough, we get enough interest, maybe. Who knows? I'm just rambling at this point. We're going to need to close this video out, or at least the commentary section, because starting to get a little hoarse. Got some business phone calls I need to make, but I'll do all that while I'm transitioning through the zone. As always, it's been fun, guys. Take care. Enjoy your evening. And we will see you all next time.